is the project I'm involved with. I'm not doing any caving right now because I'm having my breathing problems. <laughs> sure. But, uh... Well, we also published a, a manual for members to bring new people up to speed on what this project caving was. And that manual went through several different editions, bringing it more and more up to date. So the training of people, the uh, giving responsibility to newcomers who looked like they could take it, turning over the officers pretty often, uh, so you give a lot of people experience, the emphasis on party leadership, training party leaders, because when you have a team off somewhere surveying, uh, you can't be depending on people back in headquarters. The party leader is the... And that came about when Phil Smith met Werner von Braun, and he said to him one time, we explained this long-distance caving, and he said, do you have any ideas? And Von Braun said, well, they put the lifeboats on the ship. <laughs> Which was an aha moment. So that reinforced our view that if you have a whole cadre of party leaders, uh, party leaders will recruit other people and train other people but they pretty well have to master everything because they are the admiral on the given trip. So what do you do for fun these days when you're not caving? Well, I do a lot of writing. <laughs> a lot of, uh, I sent you the book. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a copy on my laptop right here. So those, uh, those stories appear in the Connecticut Underground newsletter every month uh, and have for the past six or seven years. How did you get hooked up with writing for the Connecticut people? I, somewhere along the line I met Danny Brass and we got to talking about books and uh, so on and uh, he's a bat expert and uh, he sent me his bat book and I said well I've been writing some short stories on caves he said he would like to see see some and uh, so I sent him some and darn if he didn't publish them he, he's the editor of that newsletter, has been for a long time, in addition to reviewing lots of lots of cave books. So he's uh, he's been a fan all along, and it seems there's nothing too fantastic for him to put in his creative corner. <laughs> You talk in your longest cave about Tommy Brucker when he was 10 years old crawling up a crevice in a... a Great Onyx Cave. Yeah, and trying to see where it went. Yes, Red Watson described that vividly. He, he said, all right, I think you'd fit in the crack, and so he kind of stuffed Tom up there and Tom went off exploring and Red Watson thinks well wait a minute this this kid is pretty young if he falls in a pit or something I, I'm gonna be in a bad position here so he began yelling for Tom to make his presence known and uh, I guess Tom was out of hearing or something and eventually came back. But 
Red Watson said he aged a few years uh, worrying about that because he didn't think he could get through that crack. Tom Brooker's perspective is that the passage was just getting interesting and he finally heard Red Watson yelling at him. He wanted to get back there someday, but he didn't think he'd fit. <laughs> You haven't con managed to connect Great Onyx to the rest of the system yet, have you? Almost. <clears throat> now, there, there's probably a die trace that connects Lucy Cova River with, uh, uh, with uh, Ralph's River Trail in the cave. What we have done is to well, first of all, there's a piece of Ralph's River Trail that runs under a piece of Great Onyx Cave. There's a 40-foot separation, and in neither passage is there any side lead going up or prairie to connect. So, in continuing to survey in Great Onyx Cave, we uh, got over the dam that dammed up a pit and created kind of a lake there which they described as a river but it's not a river. At any rate you can go over the dam and drop down into a continuation of the drain of that shaft. The water becomes deeper and deeper until finally you know, you're like this. And that's about 200 feet from a river in Mammoth Cave. Uh, we think we know now where it comes out in there and we think that it comes out under a ledge. Uh, you know in surveying through a river you're surveying through as high as you can stand. You're not looking under the ledges to find things coming in. So we think we know where that connection is whether there's a sump in the middle of it, we don't know yet. Uh, the problem with a big cave is, uh, in addition to the survey book, there is a grading of leads. And a lead can look pretty ordinary or maybe very promising if you have a big wind coming through it. If a big a lead has a big promise, it gets four stars. And uh, so the lead list for Mammoth Cave is a big thick book. And so expedition planners, uh, one reason to become an expedition planner is that you can do whatever you want to do. Maybe they'll pick one of these areas and uh, all the party leaders are trained so they can go anywhere including places they haven't been before because the records are quite good. Trip reports, maps, sketches on how to get places and all the previous survey books are uh, retrievable on the computer. So <coughs> Naturally, expedition leaders like to run with four-star and three-star leads because <laughs> they'd like to find something new. And so the one and two-star leads only get done when we're resurveying something <coughs> or it appears that something else is coming close to something. But that's one of the advantages of being an expedition leader. You can uh, send people wherever you want to. And if you're hit it lucky, you might get two or three breakthroughs. If you're unlucky, you just add a few hundred feet to the cave. So, the priority for connecting Great Onyx Cave has depended on uh, a party going with a GoPro camera into this 
place where the body is underwater and they're up to about here and they haven't gone through this 200 foot separation. It has been ditraced, however, so we know where it is. <laughs> so the uh, apparently the people running, uh, well, since COVID-19, the expeditions have been confined to just 20 people. And uh, so there hasn't been the expeditions of 50, 60, 70 people that we had for many years. I suppose when it picks up again, why some of these things will be, will find connections. We thought we had a connection to left of the trap and sides cave. They were surveyed to be 16 feet apart. A huge effort was put into two strong parties going into both places. Uh, they, they both came to a flowstone block of the passage. They could talk through it, but they couldn't find any way around the flowstone block. <laughs> uh, is there a way around? Well, it took, uh, you know, like eight hours into the flowstone block and 10 hours back out. So the logistics of that suddenly shrank that thing down to not as promising as it once was. Meanwhile, they're making breakthroughs at the top of Cathedral Domes and tying that into Kentucky Avenue. Uh, so there's always some place that's very hot there's another place where Sides Cave is about 15 feet from East Salts Cave, where there's a sandy dig on both sides of this 15 feet connection. If that were dug, it would put people about eight hours head start into that part of the cave. And that's likely to be the part of the cave that will connect to Fisher Ridge. There has not been any effort that we are aware of, of, of people trying to connect Fisher Ridge. We, we figure that it will be connected sooner or later, but uh, uh, nobody in CRF is eager to do it. I think if we became eager, it would be kind of a, a direct, uh, we'd know how to do it. <laughs> you do it on the river level where the connections are made. I guess there's uh, several caves that are continuing off to the east there that could potentially hook up. You've got Fisher Ridge, yeah, and they're real close to Crump Spring Cave. They, they're underneath per Crump Spring. Yeah, uh, like there's like the chart layer in between the two different right. caves. Yes, this blocking the connection. Then north of that, there's a Vinegar Ridge Cave, which is still quite a ways away, but you know it's. Yeah. Look at what the other connections you made, you know, it's not unreasonable. Are there other connections you're talking about? Like, oh, there's in the south you got Martin Ridge and Wig Pistol. Yeah, well, <coughs> those are the, the obvious ones are Fisher Ridge <coughs> and uh, Martin Ridge. And there are not, there have, for a couple of years there haven't been any serious efforts to, to advance these connections. I think everybody who knows anything about this thinks that they will be connected. <laughs> uh, but the trips are so horrendous to get to the end of where these things are likely to be connected 
that you don't find very many people capable of doing it. And after they make a trip like that, it's tough to get them to do it again. <laughs> So meanwhile, there are, there are low-hanging fruit <laughs> everywhere because the lead list gets longer and longer. Uh, the chances of, of discovering a thousand feet of cave on any expedition are pretty good. Uh, so why worry about uh, these connections? Well, for example, there's a large effort going to resurvey and extend the new discovery of Mammoth Cave, which was made in 1938. Well, the route from Mammoth Cave to New Discovery, before they put in an entrance, was through Roaring River. So they brought kayaks into Roaring River, and uh, in the course of plumbing the depths of Roaring River, they've come across a couple of 40-foot blue holes going down into a cave system underneath Mammoth Cave, a flooded cave system, which we knew was there because there have been scuba divers that have gone in the turnhole spring. You go to 30 feet down underwater and you come into an elliptical passage that looks like Cleveland Avenue. And those are thought to be uh, phreatic passages. They're flooded. Uh, that's probably the lowest level of Mammoth Cave is 30 feet under the pool of the Green River. Uh, flooded at a time when the Pleistocene moved gravel into the lower part of the Green River and backed the pool up uh, beyond Pike Spring. So there's a flooded lower level that almost nobody knows anything about. <laughs> when Lock and Dam 6 were removed, it dropped the water about three feet and opened up some parts of the cave that are still in the river level and a lot of people are not interested in going in the river level and those who are have a much more promising area in a, a place uh, which is uh, out toward the sinkhole plain and uh, is called the X Loop. And uh, there's a chance of finding an entrance out there. And uh, so there are places that have much higher priority for going than other places that seem to be what ought to be attractive. <laughs> well, as a, someone looking at it from the outside, you know, you want to find Big Cave. And I say, oh, yeah, well, okay, they found another two miles of the 450 mile system. What would be much more interesting is they would connect <laughs> yeah. so, some of these other caves into into the system is what, what would be, you know, like that's like something, you know, noteworthy as opposed to finding another two miles of... Well, uh, the, the connection fanatics are few and far between. I mean, I'm, I'm a connection fanatic. I, if I got to run an expedition... I'd be after a connection, see, but most of them are just after systematically exploring whatever is hot at the moment. Uh, but I've been a connection fanatic ever since 1954. Well, if you look at the history of the connections, the, there was a, the first connection was like a long time ago when they connected uh, bed quilt with what was it colossal yes and that when that was in the 1800s or do you know when that was yeah it was about 1890 or something like that <coughs> if you look at the history of mammoth cave there's certain points if you look at breakthroughs in 
discoveries and connections with other caves where you get 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 a jump in the cave length. And the first one's probably in uh, like 1840 or so when when Stephen Bishop crossed bottom was yeah pit. that was a big jump. And then you look at you have uh, connections between different caves. You had bed quilt with uh, colossal, and then there things slowly grew and you had little bits here and there and then they found the new discovery section which added a big chunk in mammoth uh, and then you started with your uh, connections in the Flint Ridge to look at you had a unknown with Salt's Cave and then after that uh, you connected well, I can show you. I made a graphic to illustrate. Yeah, I've got the graphic. It's here in my book. Oh, you do? <laughs> well, that graphic is a couple of years old now, but it shows the uh, sequence of connections. And it's I made a table that goes with that. You probably ought to have it with you because it shows who made the connections and when. Well, I was hoping to get some some uh, files like that from you before I <laughs> go home. Okay. Uh, sure. So well, that's, so you that's got the graphic. Big Colt Colossal Mammoth New Discovery, Unknown to Crystal. Yeah. Then Colt Colossal to Salts, then Unknown to Salts. Uh, then you connected Crystal System to the Mammoth System, then Proctor to Morrison. Then Proctor Morrison to Mammoth, Ropple to Mammoth, yeah. a little cave called Hoover, which I don't know anything about, never heard of. Hoover is over toward uh, the east, uh, not too far from uh, Fisher Ridge. And then you have Donkey to Mammoth. Donkey Cave is really called Floyd's Cave. Yeah, it's on the earlier earlier map as Floyd's Cave. Yeah. Now, the reason it got called Donkey Cave is that we were opening up the sinkhole to get into it again because we had 800 feet of trunk passage just on top of Pole Avenue. And uh, somebody wanted to open it up, so we began digging and the Park Service resource manager said, uh, we don't allow digging in the park. So we said, well, uh, we're just uh, making the entrance safer. Surely we can't stop uh, a safety project. Well, I don't want you working on Floyd's Cave anymore. So then it became Donkey Cave because Floyd presumably found the cave when he was plowing a truck garden or something with a, a donkey. <coughs> and so it had that name colloquially. So it's now called Donkey Cave. Uh, so that in the trip reports, uh, it's not Floyd's cave anymore, it's a donkey cave. What other little segments are out there of, of passage that are noteworthy, that aren't connected into the main system? Great Onyx Cave is the biggest one, uh, or is, is probably the, the quickest new connection. Uh, then I would say Fisher Ridge is next and then the, the Wig Pistol Cave. Uh, when that comes in, we're, we've gone beyond 500 miles. You pick up about 220 miles with Fisher Ridge, time you'll be dead. And that way you could be very prophetic and at the same time predict a big number so that it becomes 
known so that if at the end we said it would be a thousand mile cave by the end of this century. Well, we have to 2099, see, and uh, nobody alive today is going to be around in 2099. Oh, sure, lots of people will be. <laughs> you think? Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, I won't be, be uh, and so they can either say uh, Brucker and Borden were uh, conservative, we have a thousand and two hundred miles, or they could say Rucker and uh, Borden missed it by twenty miles. <laughs> well, they'll they'll figure you're just like trying to spur people on by giving them some yeah. number to shoot for, right? Without any real expectation but that you're. I won't care, to... and neither will Borden. I'm sorry, I wanted to look up something here. The last long cave list is listed Mammoth at 412, Fisher Ridge at 130, uh, yeah I would call it 200 but it's a 130 I think is correct. Wig Pistol is <coughs> at 35. What's that? Hmm? Crystal? Wig Pistol. Wig Pistol. Yeah, that's about right. It says 34.62. Yeah. And but they, the data for those caves seems to be uh, relatively up, you know, the, 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 they're, not terribly old, I'm saying. <laughs> so, but just between those two, you have another 170 miles. Yeah. On top of Mammoth's 420 and 412. So, you're making progress. Yes. <laughs> Slowly, but you're making progress. <laughs> um, did you say there was some big cave down in Mexico in the Yucatan that's substantial miles? Well, Pat, uh, well, Pat Corral, Pat Cambesis says that the one that's going to uh, surpass us is the Sac Acton system in the Yucatan, which uh, apparently has a lot of underwater cave connected with it. I think it's in Bob Gold's list, it's the uh, uh, third longest cave. And uh, so they keep adding a lot to that. I uh, was thinking, you know, if we, if they get close, right, we could always connect Fisher Ridge and eclipse them pretty fast. Well, that would be a pretty impressive cave to uh, just suddenly appear to everyone's horizon with 400 miles of passage. <laughs> well, that's why, for example, you mentioned your cave at four and a half miles. Well, that's a lot of cave. And people who aren't cavers don't realize this. You know, 400 miles, 412 miles is a lot of cave. And... But, you know,